I'm Gary Bouton and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month is the second part of part one this month. Uh, let's call it part two. It's all about photo composition and how versions 10, 9, and 8, the mask tools, can be used to turn a blob picture into something extraordinary. So come on, let's get deeper into photography. There's only two exposures left in here. To begin this month, go to ZaraZone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to use it in Zara. The main image we're going to work on this month is the GEMS Zara file, and as you can see, it needs tonal separation, it needs highlights, it needs a lot of local work. And so if you own versions uh, 8, 9, or 10 of Zara, you have uh, masking tools, and you're probably asking yourself, so what's all this masking stuff, and how can this help us in Zara to correct parts of a photograph? Well, first of all, the term masking in Zara means to protect areas from editing. Region means to expose an area to editing, exactly the opposite. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clown around a little bit. If you'd like to, uh, open the uh, fashion clown image in Zara and I'll take you through exactly what each tool does a little bit later. Uh, it's the region painter tool, the freehand region tool, the rectangle tool, the mask painter tool, the show masker region, the invert mask or region, and the uh, clear mask or region. Now, first of all, let's take the region painter tool. As I said before, a region means to expose an area to editing. So if we select that, select a size nib, and uh, paint the clown's nose, it's exposed for editing now. What you can do is uh, take the uh, photo enhance tool from the photo group, and on the info bar, all these features are available. I'm making his nose a little lighter or a little darker, and you can also uh, choose the uh, set photo hue control, new to version 10, and uh, change his nose from uh, red to green. Um, so if you put him on a corner, he'd make an efficient stoplight. Now the freehand uh, region tool uh, operates very much like the uh, freehand pen uh, tool in Zara, and uh, it may not have the greatest accuracy. You see it's snapping too at the tie a little bit, but for irregular areas, and particularly if you have a, a digitizing tablet, um, this is a good tool to pick. Uh, now that it's selected, I can make the uh, tie a little more contrasty, remove the contrast, which means removing the color and all the texture. If there was just something that you needed to do to the tie, now I'm going to restore that a little bit, and I'm going to uh, desaturate the tie so it matches the uh, jacket a little better. Moving on, the rectangular region tool, as the name suggests, creates rectangles. Um, I don't see a lot of opportunity for rectangles in this picture, but just let me show what you can do. Um, you can select a region, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, blur it. So uh, it's good for depth of field with rectangular shapes. Moving on, the mask painter tool does the opposite of uh, a region tool. Uh, what it's doing is it is protecting the area that I'm painting right now. And uh, this is taking longer than I'd like to. So if you can set YouTube to uh, 60 frames a second, then uh, you'll probably be watching this much more quickly and enjoying it half as much. But uh, once we have the uh, clown uh, protected, The background now is exposed for editing. We just chose different tools that show things differently here. The clown uh, cannot be touched by the editing tools. And uh, let me show you another tool here. Um, with the, uh, I've just chosen the brush tool. And what they did was that took the uh, tint away. We can go back and the clown is still masked. We just chose different tools that show things differently here. Uh, now if I invert it, the clown is exposed for editing and the background uh, cannot be edited. It is protected. It is masked. Now uh, let's go back so that the uh, clown is protected. And what I'm doing is I'm removing the color from the background. So we've got a uh, monotone, some might say monotonous image. 
Also on the Mask Tools toolbar in version 10, you have a uh, show mask or region. Now what that does is that completely eliminates any visibility of what you might be doing here. Uh, when I switched from the, uh, the mask tool to the uh, region select tool, I still had a marquee going on. So let me do a little bit of uh, painting here to show you exactly what the uh, show mask region tool does. Now the show hide region tool uh, it takes whatever you've done on screen, regardless of uh, which tool you've done to uh, select or mask something, and it simply hides it so you can preview the uh, area that you've used. Uh, this is a little different technique than I did um, earlier uh, by switching from the uh, mask to the uh, region tool, but as you can see here, you can uh, hide and show it. Okay, moving from clowning around to uh, getting down to the real stuff, the uh, Zara Gem Caper. Uh, what I'd like to tell you first, um, before we get into heavy duty editing, there's one thing I'd like to point out um, about masks. You can feather them. Now, I'm going to uh, mask this fill the lips right now. What's going to happen when you feather this? I want you to notice that as you um, increase the feather amount, the feathering works from the outside in. It gets smaller. So when you feather a region or mask in Zara with the masking tools, the same thing's going to happen. Now, what I want you to do first is we're going to put a spotlight underneath these gems to uh, separate them better from that um, stupid background that I created. However, you don't want to select the gems within that circle because we're going to be changing the brightness of that. Now, as that applies to feathering, what you want to do, and I'm making this a little bit bigger so you can uh, increasing the width of the outline, is you want to draw just to the inside of the gems. Because what you're going to do is you're going to uh, do a uh, subtract from operation and subtract the gems that uh, you don't want uh, brightened, you don't want touched from the overall selection of the ellipse. And uh, when you get to the point where um, you want to feather that ellipse, what's going to happen is the ellipse will contract, but the inverse will happen to the selection because you've subtracted it from it. So therefore, in theory, very, very little of uh, these gems are going to be changed tone-wise. Now I'm including the... Uh, diamond there and the rough, um, sorry, and uh, adding these two selections, um, including the uh, that diamond and the rough, you want to uh, put them together. Now I've put the arrange commands on uh, my standard bar there. And once, this is to show you that they're uh, all selected, what you want to do is uh, subtract them from the circular selection. And again, I've got the uh, subtract command uh, from the arrange menu, I'm going to feather the shape. And as you can see, the uh, outline makes a pretty nice, soft, spotlight sort of shape, and the uh, diamonds have not been selected. Now, here's another way. Choose Cut Shape. And I'm going to show you a different way to make a mask. Click on the Mask tool, then click on the uh, Choose Cut Shape. Now, I want you to uh, choose the Masking Tool group, Choose the Mask Painter tool, and here's a weird one. Edit, Paste, Paste in Place, and what you have now is a mask, a masked region that uh, actually we want the inverse of this because we don't want the shape protected. We want to be able to edit it. So what we want to do is to uh, go to the Masking Tool group and choose Inverse. So now only the area that you can see inside the tint can be changed is to choose the photo enhance tool get all the uh, changes you can make and let's uh, brighten it up using the uh, brighten command and that's a pretty good beginning for our spotlight unfortunately uh, I think we need a uh, cone to uh, indicate that that spotlight isn't just a stain on the bricks so what I want you to do now is uh, choose your favorite drawing tool and make a uh, more or less truncated triangle like I'm showing you here and again we're going to use the shape uh, as a uh, as a mask uh, with the cut and paste 
However, um, I'm going to show you something different. You can add transparency within a shape. And I'm going to go with linear. There we go, linear. And uh, fool around a little bit here, um, trying to get something that looks as though the uh, spotlight is casting, but there's some lighting fall off. So what I'm going to do is to make a uh, totally opaque ending and starting point. And then I double click to uh, create new stops on the transparency. And what I have here is that the uh, edges are going to be masked and they're going to fall off to a selection. And I'm going to feather the whole thing. I want you to do this too. And uh, I'm going to just fool around a little bit more with the control points. I think that's a good thing to do. All right. And uh, I think that's going to serve us well. So what I want you to do now is to select it, cut it, choose the uh, masking tool from the masking tool group, and then uh, choose paste, paste in place. And because the uh, mask tool was active, you've uh, pasted a mask. And the uh, red areas there at the moment indicate protected areas, and the clear areas uh, indicate exposed. We want to invert that, as I just did. I want you to uh, increase the brightness. That looks pretty good. And you can see there's a fall off both in the center and on the outside. And I think what we have here is a uh, fairly nice spotlight. And there's one little thing I'm going to show you how to do in this tutorial. And that is that the uh, gems themselves, if light was actually casting on them, they'd probably have a sharp highlight. So what I want you to do is to create little rectangles. Everywhere you think that the light would be hitting certain gems, what you want to do is you want to create a uh, region shape there that you can change the uh, brightness of the gems, which would be uh, reflecting on top. And I think these four are the most important ones. I'm not going to concern myself with the, the uh, uh, two in front. So uh, you select all four, and then you add them together using uh, either the uh, button or uh, the arrange command. And I want you to cut the shapes. Choose the mask tool. And then choose paste. Paste in place. Now, those are uh, masked areas. So what you need to do is to uh, invert them. And one last time, I believe, we're going to take the uh, photo enhance tool and increase the brightness. And once that's done, I do believe that we have a picture that looks a lot better than it did before with the monotonous colors, nothing called out. I'm sure you can do better than this. Um, if I showed you exactly how to do this or exactly how I do this, this would not be a 12 minute tutorial. So um, I hope you've had fun with masks. Uh, say hi to the Lone Ranger for me and I'll see you next time. There's a signpost up ahead. It marks the end of your journey, but it also says, come back next month and be our guest at...